Well, good morning. Donnie Walker here. Got my camera kind of turned around to use my um, camera lenses on the back side of the phone so I can't see what I'm, I'm, I'm filming. But hopefully it'll work out okay. I had a fellow asking about 181, 281, 288 saws, the 200 series. Very well built saws, lasted forever. They still actually make 288s. I seen a brand new one in our shop last year that a fellow bought uh, down in Malaysia or something or had a ship from there or wherever. You can buy still the old school 372s and 288s from different countries like that. But here we're, we're going to run EPA saws, so we uh, not a lot of sellers are bringing them in. If we got caught selling those here, we'd lose our dealership through the EPA laws. I'll give you some history of the 181, 281, and 288. Let me just move my 585. I was just redialing up because I'm starting to do a bunch of these and I'm trying to perfect them. Just remeasuring the port timing, making sure my my tools are lining up the way I'm porting them to get them all perfect. So let's get this out of the way. So the fellow was asking me about the oiler system on the 181, 281, and 288s. 272s, 61s, 266s. All kind of the same. Get you down here so you can see decently. Of this one, we're going to take apart. This saw came in um, from one of my dad's old buddies, uh, Howie Davis. He's owned a trucking business in town here for years, hauling chip uh, trucks, hauling chips for the mills and um, whatever else, hog fuel and stuff. Eh? He's had a big trucking business for years. So this saw is a, is a 181, old school rod throttle. It starts with a six a serial number, so I'm pretty much sure this is a 1986 model. Um, usually that's the way the serial numbers begin with the year. This is, came from CWD number 11, so it was used in the Couch and Woodlands Division, probably as a bucker saw or a landing saw, or it could have been a falling saw. It's in pretty good shape. Case is all good, bolt holes are all good. I do remember why he left it though. The carburetor was flooding and he didn't want to buy a $300 carburetor for it. I'll find a used carburetor and I'd actually wouldn't mind changing this over maybe into a 288cc. Uh, 181s are a little bit different displacement. Um, but very good saw as well. So on these saws, if you notice, it's got the Tillotson carburetor. If you can kind of see in here, it's got a little brass plug by where your choke lever goes on. That's the governor of the carburetor. We used to take those out and put a little tiny high-speed Welsh plug in there and screw it back in. That would block the governor, and then you could adjust the carburetor right and make it rev more, give it a little more power. Guys like the RPM better. So good old Tillotsons. Um, they worked really good on these, two, two, two adjustments, obviously. Then they came out with a different throttle setup where your plastic arm would come over and just push down on the, on the carburetor, right? Actually, I kind of thought I had one of those carburetors sitting here, but I don't. Anyways, you know what I mean. Um, they had rubber mounts, um, all the six of them. So, you know, sometimes they would deteriorate and, and get bad, and you'd have to throw new mounts in it. Then they came out with spring mounts, and we really didn't like them. Plus, a great big one on the front here on 288s, and they didn't have the two in the front. So we used to go and put the rubbers back in it. Uh, they had soft and hard rubber ones and the fallers liked them that way they were just a good all-around saw this is a, a low top top one nylon filter so it was easy to wash the guys easy for the guys to wash with with gas and oil bang them out put them back on uh the, you know a lot of the fines would get, would get through but generally these motors lasted for a long time this one's still good from 1986 not like some of this new new technology that's supposed to be better sure it's sure it's better it gets better fuel and uh and it's lighter but it doesn't mean that it's any better these things sure they smog more didn't meet the epa but they just ran forever one of the probably some of the best series saws ever built and a lot of people will agree just like the 66 066 still 044 and those type of models right 
Okay, so let's get into the Euler system. I printed off off a workshop manual at work. <clears throat> Here's all your different Eulers from uh, 394, 3120, 61, 268, 272, uh, 288, 281, 181, and 3120. As we go through this, I got part numbers to show you guys to um, if you need new seal or the new O-ring for the for the Euler. Or, or new little pieces. I only got so many part numbers, but most of the stuff's still all available. Uh, check out with your local dealer or you can order off us online. Here's a section on 281, 288 XP. You know, shows you how to take it all apart, but I'm going to show you how to take the clutch off and how to get out the oiler and show you um, different features of it and what goes wrong. Okay, first of all, you got to take the clutch off off that way so righty loosey lefty tighty it's a left hand thread you can either use an impact which i did earlier at the shop sorry i cheated but i don't have my half inch impact here or i could have used a, a socket with a bar with a, a piston stop in it or a rope down the cylinder they show you actually in the workshop manual several ways of different ways of doing it with rope a piston stop or using the impact if you're in the shop, if you're not out in the bush. So anyways, let's wind this off. Actually, I just want to talk about a couple other things that used to go wrong with these saws, which were basically just mounts and some wiring. See this red wire? It comes from your your coil, your, your coil from your, your flywheel over to this trigger coil where your spark plug lead is. This, this wire was usually the bad one on all sides. It started misfiring and running like crap. Guys thought it was carburetor, but it wasn't his ignition. So this red wire would come loose on this part of the, of the trigger coil or come loose on the other end or get or get the coating scraped off and it would be arcing out, out in the case here. That was the most common thing wrong, go wrong with these. So they were pretty easy. I would actually glue these wires in so it doesn't happen again and make sure they're nice and tight on the, um, the fitting out for the wire. So yeah, that was just one of the things. Oh, and the switches. They didn't have a ground screw on these ones. They actually ground through the case. So these old 181s, uh, 266s, 61s, the, they ground through the cases. So if the switch isn't working, a lot of times I just told people to take your screwdriver, scrape the paint here on the side of the case where the switch fits in. And that would make it enough so it would ground again to the kind of little brass fittings on the side and the switch would work again. If not, you can install the new style switch where you have to drill a little hole in the case here, with a little self-tapping screw, and screw one of the new style ones on it. 503-517-901. I don't know why I know that number. I could be wrong on that. Anyways, I just want to show you that stuff. Okay, back to the oiler clutch. I've already loosened it, so yeah, righty loosey. There we go. Inspect your clutch. Pull it, the shoes, this, this thing's nice and tight. The spring's in good shape. And the shoes themselves aren't worn out at all. You'll find really older ones can be that way. These springs aren't available anymore. You might be able to get aftermarket or find a dealer that have them or switch it to an updated clutch like off of 394 or uh, yeah, 394s. And they got the uh, newer style type clutches. All right, so there's a clutch. Set that aside. Now here's your drum. Pull it off. This one's three eighths. There's your little dust cover that goes on the clutch drum. That's to stop kind of material getting into your oiler where your gear is and your pump shaft, and make sure it doesn't uh, get clogged up and messed up. Inspect your your spline on your drum. Make sure it's not all warped from the sprocket, and check the sprocket too. This one's got the indicator lines. So it's a fairly new sprocket. This wasn't the original I came with. So we'll just kind of leave that together. There's our bearing. Check it out. Hardly ever replaced bearings unless you lose them. So yeah, we'll set that aside with the clutch and it's all together. Okay, so there's your, your clutch drum assembly with the sprocket. Your dust cover, the sprocket, and the bearing, clutch, and drum. Now you get into where the oiler is, you'll see the, the plastic worm gear in here. All of them pretty much, all of them had plastics in these series. 2100s, uh, 3120s had like a brass one. Give it a little clean out here. 
You got another little shield here, a metal shield that presses into the oiler. It's also where that dust seal rides in there too, uh, so no, nothing gets in there. Right um, here, you'll see there's one, two, three, four uh, little numbers within. There's a little screw here with a little dot on it. You can turn that to get more oil or less oil, whatever size bar you're using. Um, so you can get the right amount of oil for the right length bar you're using. If you're milling, you want it on maximum. If you're following with a big bar, you'd be, be on maximum. These saws we majorly ran 28, 30 inch bars falling with them. Some guys ran 33s. Very reliable saws. Years ago, I worked in a logging camp called Sabalas and we were, they were running 056 Magnum stills when I first got there. They're all junk, falling apart, wore out. So I finally got Mr. Fedgy, my boss, to send in some brand new 066s. So I had 20 brand new 066s and I, then I parted out the old, old saws and sold them off to some shake blockers and wood cutters. I had one faller, Bobby Stange, Stange from Souk. Uh, uh, Souk division had shut down, so a bunch of the loggers came up to Sabalas to work. They were owned by the same logging company. So they transferred some guys there. He wouldn't run the still, so I had to get him a brand new 288. I gave him a brand new 288, I'd pipe the muffler, didn't do any porting to it. And you know that saw? I never seen it back in that shop till probably a year from then. That guy was one of the best producing fallers. And uh, he can lay his wood out and just a dynamite guy, man. Just a great guy. Hey, Bobby, love that guy. Um, so just, just an incredible saw. Like he was such a good saw handler too, that he never broke anything or bent anything, you know, like they're just reliable, totally reliable. Just like those six sixes that we got in there. So, okay. Back, back to our thing here on the oiler. So now I got, I took the three screws out and you use a three mm Allen wrench. I don't never seen them any different. If they have, someone has changed them. Take the three screws out. Now, if you notice at the bottom of the oiler and the top, there's little spots where you can kind of pry it out. Now, as I'm prying this out, the oiler gear is gonna come with it and also the seal that seals the crankshaft from sucking air. So now I've taken it off. You can see down here. This is where the oil comes out of the line from the tank. And this is where the oil goes into this valley up here to the bar pad area where the oil comes out. Make sure your hose is in good shape. Take it out and clean it and clean the screen. Clean this debris out around here. We're going to go out and blow it off here in a minute. And don't lose this little black o-ring grommet where the oiler seals on to here when I put it back on to, to do the feed hole. So just take those kind of things out of here and put them aside where your screws and stuff are in a little box or a bag so you don't lose them. This bearing in there looks good. Okay, so we'll get back at this in a minute. So there's our oiler. There's our oiler gear. And there's a steel wa flat washer in behind these to space it from the crank to the oiler gear so this doesn't ride up into the crankshaft, obviously, and protects the seal. There's our seal right here, okay? It's just pressed in. I just press. I just push them out with a socket, and just put them in the vise with a new one, and then just squeeze the seal back into the to the oiler. So yeah, check this oiler gear out. The teeth are good that that drive it, and and the worm gear itself looks in fine shape. It's quite amazing for this old saw. No, no wear marks at all. So if yours is really war right here, obviously, and these little teeth. For the clutch dumb to drive it or war, go out and get yourself a new one. I think they're 14, 15 bucks, maybe, maybe 20. Okay, so we looked at the oiler gear, that looks good. The drive part was good. Now let's check out our pump here. Here's the pinion, pinion shaft. Oiler shaft, pinion, moves around freely. This this old seal's kind of hardened up, so you know, it might, it might start sucking air. I will be replacing that. Then you have an O-ring around the edge of it here, where the oiler sits in 
and seals you know, the outer race of the bearing and the crankcase. So make sure that's in good shape. If it isn't, replace that as well. You can put a little bit of glue around that silicone if you want when you put it back together in case this isn't fitting as tight anymore or simply put a new one on. Check out your, your feed hole and your, your in hole. Oil goes in and comes out. Make sure that's clean. But I'm gonna go out and blow this off right now so you can see it a little better. hate working on dirty stuff all full of stuff you can't see anything okay so on these oilers you can actually rebuild them you can you can buy the pump shaft the little washers the spring and you can actually rebuild it so at the end of the boiler here I'll show you here let me clean this out too ever remember rebuilding them up that much you know basically i just clean them up and then put new seals in them and uh put them back together you know with a new um with a new um oiler gear okay so we got this off now here's that adjuster i was telling you about you got you know one two three four a little hard to see the numbers now but there's a little dot on this thing so you can turn it and do it so what this does is it pushes like a little the end of the screw's got like a taper so now now this this pump piece will go back and forth farther it acts like that's what they call it a pump because it pumps the oil as this thing's spinning it's floating back and forth and it pumps the oil from the oil tank here through the th through the oil and then out your out hole okay so let's take take it apart let's first take our adjuster out of here just your screw looks like the still tuning screwdriver is gonna fit it okay and you know just remember how you're taking it apart so you can put it back together properly this one's a little different. It's got a little flat spot, little divots on it. So every little divot's a little bigger or deeper. So that makes it, makes it more oil, okay? Gives it more oil. Once you have that out, lay that aside by your O-rings. Now you can take this back screw out here. See the pump pinion shaft, okay? It sits, sits on the saw like that. Then the oiler gear turns out to pump the oil. Let's take this end screw out now. Now we can take the pinion shaft out of it. Come on, baby. It's been a while since I worked on one of these. Have patience with Army with me here. Should come out. Stuck it. Sometimes these things get dented and they won't go past the spot that's got a little, little thing there. Let's put in the vise. So yeah, good good size, man. Like you know, if anyone's rebuilding any, you can't go wrong rebuilding these. 
you know, they'll, they'll last you longer than new saws. Like, look at the look at the year of this thing, right? You know, you can't beat that for 1986 till now. Okay, there we go. We got that out. Not quite. It's been in there since 1986, eh? You know, most of you guys out there probably aren't even that old. Okay? I was born in 66, so... 86 you know i was 36 years old okay so there's that end let's just give her a little clean in there too don't lose that piece you gotta line it back up when you put it in okay now we should be able to get the pinion shaft out of here Sorry, one more screw here. Right in the bottom, right on the bottom here to get the pinion shaft out. Forgot about that one. Like I say, it's been a few years since I've done one of these. Okay, now I need the right side of the screwdriver. Look at that. Pretty tight. Let's put it in the vise, grab, grab ourselves a better screwdriver. Hopefully I got the right size here. Get this stuff out of here. Okay. Yeah, let's go look at here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Like I say, it's been in there since 1986. Okay, look at that. Just loosen it off and just pulls right out. So there's our pump pinion shaft comes out of there. Just watch, there's a spring and a couple of flat washers inside there. So there's our gear now. You can see it's in, it's in good shape. The teeth are good. Spring's in good shape. And there's your little paddle at the end, a little flat spot that spins around and goes back and forth and pumps your oil from your oil tank into your, into your, uh, for your bar. Let's get these little washers out of here. This one's only got one, I think. Yep. Oh, two. That's right. You had two. So that's your spacing for your pinion to go in there. So set those aside. Now you can take and go wash this thing out to make sure there's no debris in it. And you can also punch that seal out so you can put a new seal on it. I'll show you how I do that. I just put the oiler in the vise like this. Take a socket. And just hammer, hammer the old one out. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. So the seal, I'm going to replace when I redo this saw. The seal part number is 502-50-5201. So you want to get yourself one of them and replace it. The O-ring is part number 740 now, when you have a new seal and your oiler's all clean, ready to go, back in, make sure that O-ring's good. Take the seal, obviously, and the seal part, we're going to go to the motor side. So you just set it on the oiler like that. And drop some tape. Like so. Just go to your vise. Put that against the vise. Turn your vise in until it's even. With the housing so simple okay so that's simple so that's to just give your oiler you have your feed line your feed hole your adjust adjuster on the outside of the oiler your pinion gear your oiler gear and your drive clutch drum and and clutch drive they're pretty basic so now when you're doing these to install it back onto the saw, the seal, you should use a seal sleeve or you can use a, um, just work it around with your, with a little screwdriver. 
And I brought those seal sleeves. Now where did I put them? Hmm. Okay. Okay. So the seal sleeve part number is 503260205. What it is basically is like a little cone. I know I brought them. I don't know where I put them. But in particular, just, just to show you guys. Okay. It's basically a sleeve. If you all know what a sleeve is, it goes over the crankshaft here and it allows, allows you to just have this seal in the oiler and basically just push the oiler on and put your screws back in. Look at this one, it fits right over the crankshaft right now anyways, because it's so wore and hard. So you want to use the seal sleeve or make yourself like a little cone out of some sheet metal, real thin sheet metal, and you can put it on there. Or you can simply get it on there and work with a little tiny screwdriver and work the seal over the edge of the crank without damaging it, then put your screws in and away you go. Then reassemble it the way we took it apart. So yeah, man, that's pretty much it. That's your basic oiler on right from uh, old 162s right up to 288s. All pretty much the same. Another thing on 288s and 61s, which happened a lot. See this adjuster screw? It's got this, I'm going to take it out and show you. A lot of people lose this adjuster screw if you don't have this nut, little rubber washer in there or like a C-clip that some of them used to come, come for. So when I sell people these kits these days, I tell them, make sure you get this, this washer in there, right? So the way this works is you have your adjuster bolt and it's got a little notch in it where this rubber washer grommet should fit. And here's your adjuster pin, okay? So you put your adjuster pin in there the right way, downwards, this rubber washer in there Put your screw in through the hole in the front, then screw your adjuster into the adjuster pin. Okay. Screw it in so you're getting that washer right up to that, that spot of the in the oiler in the adjuster bolt. Okay. Probably in your way, but I'm just gonna screw it up here and show you. So what you're going to do is you're going to screw this all the way up to that little flat spot on the, the adjuster screw. Then you're going to turn it back the other way so that thing stays there and get your adjuster pin back to the spot you want it. If you don't have that in there, the vibration of the saw, um, this screw just turns itself out and you lose it in the bush and you'll never find it again. You'll be back in for a new uh, screw kit. You can buy this adjuster screw kit with a screw the adjuster pin and that washer is a kit They're still available we have them in stock i don't have the part number for you okay so hey man hopefully that helped you out out there with your uh, oiler situation you should also change the other seal on the other side of the crankshaft too if you're doing this to it take the flywheel off you might need a good puller to take that off you take the the, the little poles off the flywheel you use a, the husky puller or make a puller with two screws get that off and just pry that seal out and put another one in. They're the same part number for each side on these seals. This this particular models of 181s, 281s, 288s use the same seal on each side. 266s and a few other models had a, a different size seal on each side. So just be aware of that. Go into your parts store or look it online and figure it out the right one you need. So hey, good old Husqvarna. Husqvarna. Uh, yeah, I got to get porting. Your, uh, my laptop is sitting on top of about six to eight cylinders that I need to do. I'm going to do a couple 066s today and a, and a 592. So, yeah, keep your saw on the wood, sticking the ice, rubbing the road. Enjoy the last couple weeks of summer. Check out the walkersawshop.com online store. Have a great day. Bye.